Hey! Hello everyone, welcome back to Fancy Gee Gee here, and this is getting a little old. <laughs> so, today we're going to be talking about how we can actually publish our code in GitHub and actually make it easier to distribute. Uh, it might not actually fit to actually put it in PYPI. If it does, I will put it in this video. If not, I'll put it in the next video. So, let's get started, shall we? So, let... First of all, I need to, sorry, it's getting trippy to see myself in the other camera here. I'm just going to minimize that. Um, <laughs> so um, all, all I'm going to do here is actually going to initialize our Git repo and getting us ready to do some publishing. Uh, to do that, we are going to use the Git command line here, and we're going to just run Git init. And we're going to initialize it as main branch because GitHub now as the default uses the main branch. But if you want to use master, it doesn't really matter. You're going to have to change there in a couple of commands that I'm going to show you later. Once we initialize our Git repo, uh, Visual Studio Code is going to reflect that and also my shell here, uh, my shell theme. Um, and it's going to tell us that there are a couple of changes that we need to commit to our branch to persist that into our version control system. This is what Git is. It's just a system to control the version of our software. And you're going to see there, is our, there are 15 files, 15 pending changes in files that we have to commit for our source control. Um, it's going to show a lot of stuff that we actually don't want people to see whenever it gets out there, right? So to ignore those files, and I chose ignore on purpose, we need to add those files to git ignore. Visual Studio Code gives us already a way to do that by right clicking on it. But if you want, you can just create a dot git ignore file in your, the root of your, um, of your project of your repo. <laughs> so in here, you're going to see that there's a now a git ignore file. And we are going to do just what we you expect back us to do. Ignore everything cache related of our project. So we don't want any anything uh, from our cache, local cache to be uh, published to our um, public repo. We also don't want anything of our egg uh, reference, which is just to run locally uh, our git repo. So we don't need anything in here to um to be published the star here the asterisk here is wildcard means everything uh not the child folders if you want that you actually need to do double double star and also our local configuration because we don't want our file and uh, um, our files of configuration of how we run it locally to be you know available for everybody else awesome once this is done, now we have our Git repo cleaned up and it's good to go. Let's commit that to our main branch, shall we? And uh, the way that we do that, we could either do that from the source control here or from command line. I would definitely suggest for you to get familiarized with the, get the command line interface because you might you know, need to use that another time in your life. So uh, what we need to do here is actually first uh, in the configuration set up my, my username and my email. So uh, so just so Git knows who's actually to blame for a a, um, a version of the file, so a specific change in the file. So it, in the actual nomenclature that we use is to blame. <laughs> uh, not very friendly, isn't it? <laughs> Anyhow, so once that's all configured, we can all just add up all of our files here and just do our initial command. Awesome. Once we just commit that out loud, our main branch now there there's no question mark anymore so it's it's up to date the only thing that it, that it, that we don't have now is our remote server having our source co source code out there persisted so you're going to see there's a little cloud there with an arrow like trying to do an upload anyhow we are going to have to set that up so let's publish that to github shall we so first we need to add, open our GitHub and let's create a new repository. And don't worry, there's not only GitHub out there. There are plenty of offerings for uh, service control servers that you can use that for Git specifically as well. But I'm going to just use uh, GitHub because I'm going to show you GitHub Actions later. So we're just going to create our repository fancy wallet and with a fancy description. <laughs> uh, fancy uh, wallet management CLI our command line interface. Yeah, it's fancier if you type it all out. Um, and we're not going to initialize it because we've done this before. And we're just going to create this repository. Git already gives us here, uh, GitHub already gives us here the Git commands to do that, but it's easy to easy enough. Uh, if you've not chosen to use main as your default branch, all you need to do here is to actually know that your origin connection here and what you're going to publish is not going to be the main branch. 
that's the only difference. But as I used main, because I'm lazy, I can just copy and paste. <laughs> Very good, eh? Um, <laughs> so once this is all pushed, surprise, surprise, if I just refresh this screen here, you're going to see all my files out there. And you're going to see that there's this tab here called Actions. I could have started with a pub, Publish Python package here, but I want to show you what it actually means to create a GitHub action from scratch. So let's do that. So to do that, we need to create a folder that GitHub is going to look for our action here called GitHub. And inside of that folder, we're going to create another one called Workflows. So these are the workflows, aka actions that are going to be running. Uh, and then here I'm going to create a Python application, uh, YAML file, where, which is where we're going to define, give GitHub um, the information of what it needs to run and when it needs to run. So let's just put that those information out there. So we need a name of this of this pipeline. Sorry, I call pipeline because of Azure DevOps. It's another tool that does it, but GitHub Actions is calling a workflow or a GitHub action. Uh, when you're going to run it and the jobs that you wanted to run. And the name, we're just going to call fancy wallet CLI, CICD. CICD is a loaded argument in here. You don't have to worry about that. But if you want to actually have a video about um, what CICD actually means, uh, just write it down in the comments and I can make a video about that. And on means when are you going to run this? Uh, for now, let's just say push. So whenever I push something on the branches, of for now just me main and i'm going to create something cool here a whenever there's a pull request also uh on the branches of main uh i'm also i also want this to run and for the jobs i want to create a job for now just build uh yeah it's already seven minutes i'm not going to have enough time jeez uh to cover pypi i'm going to make that next um but for now, let's just create a build and I'm going to show you how you're going to use that. So for the build action, so as you expect, you want to build your file, uh, build your project, and you want to ensure that your tests pass and it's actually working well. So to run tests here in your, our command line, we've, uh, we, we use Python and the unit tests, and then we just run all the tests files from the, our, our, discover, our tests folder. And this is what it does. And if it works, there's no exit code. So if you, we if we do a echo on our dollar dollar question mark, it's gonna be just zero. Zero means there's no there are no errors. You can see that from the previous video that I showed you how to run tests in your Python command line interface. But let's say we have something here, a test that does not pass. We know for a fact that if we do something crazy here, our test is not gonna pass. You're gonna see that our exit code. Something weird in here that should have not worked. Uh, probably because there's no question mark handling here. Ah, it's good. It's good that we catch that. I can test that later. Awesome. So it fails. <laughs> so whenever it fails, I can actually see that the exit code is one. So it means that it's not zero, and it actually tells us that. So meaning that uh, whenever there's a a test that does not pass, it is actually going to throw an error for us, which is awesome. And you're gonna you're gonna see what it actually means. So in Builder, I want to do all of that. So to do that, all I'm gonna have to do here is actually tell where it runs. So it runs on. I'm gonna use an, a Ubuntu machine. So this is the operational system that I want it to run. Later, it's fine. So it doesn't matter the version right now. Uh, and I want to run a couple of steps. That's that's what it is. And it's a list of steps. So um, for the first step, we actually need to. Uh, use the actions checkout uh, at yeah at v2 and this is actually just gonna check out uh, our code so it's just gonna uh, grab all of those uh, files there and put it in our uh, folder of where the, our working folder and uses and we would need to install Python so actions Python setup I think they're in version 2 and uh, don't worry you don't have to <laughs> i know this out of memory because i do that a lot but if you need to know any of that you can just go on google and search github actions uh actions or you know github actions set up python github actions you know 
do whatever you actually need to do. And, uh, oh, it's set up Python, actually. Set up Python. Awesome. All right, cool. And in set up Python, I need to tell it with a, a variable, actually, that it's going to use to actually tell me which version of Python to install. So Python version. I really don't care much about which version I'm going to use after 3, so I'm just going to call it 3.x. This action here already uh, knows to use just whatever latest we, you have with you know, 3.x. Now that we have a computer with our source code and our Python installed, we, what we need to do here is actually run what we would do here. So we're going to pip install dot, which is going to install our package, our look package. So pip install, oops, actually run pip install dot so this is going to install our package and also all the requirements that we set up in here so we just going to satisfy click requests everything that we need is already going to install it for us so this is good so we pip install dot and we're going to run after uh, python m unit tests well, I actually have this here, so I might as well just copy it over because I know I'm going to make some typos in, along the way. Uh, and I'm just going to tell it to run the, the tests. So all it's doing here is actually grabbing our files, uh, installing our package, and running it uh, in, with the unit test that we've defined, and making sure that it works. And it's going to tell us if it worked or not. Uh, and that's it. So let's save that out. Let's add a commit message here. So adding a, our GitHub action for um, uh, I already have action that's good enough for now there's a push here but also we can go from here and just run git push and we just pushes whatever we have to our version control system server and now if we push that out here and look at our code you're gonna see that there there is a new uh, commit here 18 seconds ago so hopefully now we have our action. There we go. It runs. You see, nothing under my sleeves. It just works. <laughs> um, so it say it gives my commit message in here, and it's just gonna gonna try to run it. So what it did here, it actually tried to check out my code. We can actually expand that to see what it did to clone my code. And my internet is probably not working properly to show you guys that. Oh, here it is. So it just, you know, do grabs the, the version of, of, of that commit that we just did, uh, sets up Python. It's using Python 3.9.5, installs the requirements and runs our tests. Awesome. So now let's make, let's make something cool. I know it's 13 minutes, but bear with me, please. <laughs> um, let's do this. So what, what happens though, if we want to create a new branch? Okay. And uh, we want to make some changes. So let's do uh, git branch. Uh, what, actually, let's show you here. Uh, if we do command shift palette, so command shift P or control shift P, you can just type out uh, create branch. I forgot to mention that, but that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> you can actually just type this out. GitHub Visual Studio Code already has, if you, you install the Git extension, a couple of useful commands that you can actually use, like for creating branches, for checking them out. Anyhow, so we can create a branch here, and we're going to call it... Um, let's just call it... I'm going to show you how it works, actually. So, um, uh, breaking... Um, tests. So let's just break our tests, shall we? So let's show how it actually happens if you break our test. Um, so let's do this in our tests here. Do the same thing that we did. We do a bunch of thing of weird um, uh, characters in here, and our tests are breaking right now. So let's just ensure that they are. Yeah, they are failed. Awesome. And we're gonna push that out. So let's see how how it works, shall we? So let's go and say broken tests. So let's say somebody else got into our uh, source code. Um, they wanted to contribute and make our code better, but they accidentally broke uh, one of you, our use cases. And let's push that branch out there to GitHub. Uh, this is a button to push uh, our code to GitHub as well. And as soon as we go to fancy wallet here, there's going to be a new branch here. And the person that is contributing to our project is not going to have full permission to use our default branch, which is main. So they are going to commit to their own branch and open something called a pull request. So they're requesting us 
to pull their changes into our main branch. And let's just call it a broken test. Now, look at look at what, it, what, what I'm talking about. I'm creating a pull request to main. Remember from our Python application uh, workflow that I said that whenever I actually run a pull request on main, I want this pipeline to run. And now we have a broken test. Let's see how it works, shall we? So if you create a pull request here, let's see how GitHub actually behaves. So you're going to see that it's actually going to create a nice little user interface for us that shows everything that is changed uh, and who changed, where and when. And it's going to try to run some checks. So those checks are actually our, our actions that are going to show if it works or not. And look at that. I can see before my changes get into the production or the main branch or the root of our project, if something that is coming along is going to break our use cases. So this is extremely powerful if you're working with a team to make sure that nobody is going to mess with your, your project and to make sure that it always works. Awesome. All right. Now that we know how we can, we can test and ensure that everybody's contributing and, and they're all being great into making sure that our use cases are never going to fail. Uh, next, I'm going to show you how to publish them into PYPI, uh, using your, your, your account there and, uh, you know, starting to distribute that for everybody else, everybody that has Python installed in their computers. That's, and that's all I had for today, everyone. See you in the next one. Bye.